Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, members of the Senate. A lot, been a lot of talk about tradition in the Senate, and the tra tradition of the two-thirds rule, which is a part of the rules that Dean Whitmire wants us to adopt. One of the traditions, by the way, is that freshmen are usually uh, seen and not heard, especially on day one. And I respect that, but I hope you will also respect that I see all of us as equal, and the people of my district, 700,000 people, have the same right to be heard on the Senate floor on day one as the people say in Dean Whitmire's district. He's been here the longest. So I don't see this idea of uh, freshmen being uh, seen and not heard. I hope I'm not breaking tradition. I'm just standing for the people, and that's what I ran to do, to speak for them. I feel very passionate about this, and I know there's a tradition about the rules of the two-thirds rule, but I'm not so sure everyone really even knows the history. You know, back when Alan Shivers was lieutenant governor in 47 to 49, uh, a number of senators came up with the idea of uh, setting for special order as a way to stop the regular order of business. And in 1951, Lieutenant Governor Ben Ramsey, suddenly, although there's no notation in the rule book in 1951, suddenly there, were, there was no more of setting for special order. It disappeared because it had gotten out of hand. So you see, the Senate can move to change tradition. And the reason it got out of hand, and the reason Lieutenant Governor Ramsey at the time made the decision to set that aside, was because people weren't being heard. And that really began, members, if you go back and look at the history, if it really began the time that the two-thirds rule became stronger and stronger and stronger to the point that it had stifled debate. What does the two-thirds rule really do? It means that in committee you really don't have to pay attention too much because you can get a bill out of committee if you know there's not 21 votes to take it to the floor. So we don't pay attention, potentially, in committee. We know that no controversial bill is often brought up for honest debate on the floor. You know, I have a quote here from the Temple Telegram from uh, 1956 saying there hasn't been a controversial bill discussed on the Senate floor since 1947. And I would argue that we've added about 59 years to that process. And I don't think I'm alone in thinking the two-thirds rule does not serve, excuse me, does not serve the people of Texas. I have a quote. It says, I don't think the people of Texas sent us down here to vote for things on a two-thirds vote. I think the majority votes all right. Anyone who said that? Lieutenant Governor Bob Bullock. And I think that's where we are. I understand we have to have a mechanism in order to bring bills to the floor, otherwise we have chaos. But I do not understand, and when you talk to voters, they do not understand why we need two-thirds vote. I have yet to find one legislative body in the United States of America that requires a two-thirds vote. I believe if we want to bring a bill to the floor, we should simple, have a simple majority. It doesn't make any difference which party's in power. If the people of Texas have said, we support this party, then that word should be heard on the Senate floor, whether it's Republican or Democrat. And if there's a pet issue that someone's worried about, well, gee, if we don't have the two-thirds rule, I'm afraid of this issue or that issue, well, then we are imposing our will on the people. And I don't think it's the job of the Senate to sell our story to the people. I think we all came here to sell their story to us, and they really don't care about our rules. They want their property taxes lowered, they want the border secured, and they want education to be improved in our state. They want better health care, and they want to see us take a stand on those issues. And as long as we have the 21 vote rule, that doesn't happen. Because you can, you can take a position of allowing a bill to come up, and then voting against it. So you can tell your constituents, I voted against that. But you let it come up. If you're really passionate about it, then don't let it come up. What's wrong with majority rule that was good enough for Jefferson and Madison and Monroe? It's not good enough for the Texas Senate that we cannot have majority rule? You know, the average age of the Senate, by the way, and thanks to Senator Hager for bringing it down a bit, is 54. I call that the age of opportunity. I know I can speak for every person here. The most important thing in your life are your children and your grandchildren. Most important thing. Most of you have a mature business. You're set in life. And the only thing you focus on 
is not for yourself. That's why you're here. You're making the sacrifice. You're focusing on your children, your grandchildren, and the children and grandchildren in the state of Texas. And it's a wonderful opportunity to be at that point in life where you're a mature adult and you don't have to worry about career or building wealth, where you can just worry about doing something for somebody else. And so this age of opportunity we have, members of the Senate, this age of opportunity will not last forever. Twenty years from now, very few of us will be here. We have a ten-year window to make a difference, maybe, or a fifteen-year window in the lives of our children, our grandchildren, and everyone in Texas. And I hate to see that window of opportunity squandered because we don't let a bill come to the floor that the people of Texas want us to address. You know, if I look back on Ronald Reagan and I look back on John F. Kennedy, they both had two things in common. They both had vision, and they were both bold. Kennedy said, we're going to put a man on the moon in ten years. And he inspired people when he said, ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for the country. And Ronald Reagan, although he may have had a different ideology, said, this wall will come down. And we will be the city shining on a hill. We know what's going on across the Capitol. As someone said earlier this morning, Texas is going to look to the Senate. We have to be leaders. We will determine the future of our children and our grandchildren. And I sure don't want to sit here behind my desk and see important bills never get a hearing, never get a debate. The only responsibility we have, and I'll say this in closing, the only responsibility we have as adults is to pass the baton of prosperity and freedom on to our children, our grandchildren, the next generation. That's what every generation of Texans and Americans have done from the beginning of this country. And I don't care what the problems were. Tough decisions were made in the founding years of our country, during the Civil War, during the turn of the century, during World War I, the Great Depression, the Great War of World War II. Tough decisions were made, and every generation stood up to the task, and they handed that baton off to the next generation. And that's why I ran for the Senate. I want to hand off the baton of prosperity and freedom to the next generation. And in order to do that, I believe that takes a Senate willing to take bold action like a John F. Kennedy or a Ronald Reagan and do the right thing. And the right thing is to have majority rule in the Senate. So I strongly ask you to consider voting against these rules. I strongly urge this Senate to say to the people of Texas, we are not here for our convenience to make it easy for ourselves to come to work every day. We're here to pass the bills on the issues that you want us to pass. Because when you went out and knocked on doors, and when you went out and put up yard signs, and when you went out and asked people for their vote, as five of us have recently done, no one in this Senate ever took the hand of a potential voter and said, if you vote for me when I get to the Senate, I'm going to go along with tradition that makes our life easy and not represent you. We said, we're going to stand for you in the things you believe. And I may lose. I may go down as the only person to object to the rules today. And I will respect, as you respect the decision of a jury, I'll respect your decision. But I can guarantee you that every day more and more people are talking about this issue. It is not a matter of if but when. And I'm going to be committed to bringing this chamber to a majority vote as long as I'm a senator. So, Mr. President, I will be voting against the adoption of the rules, which include a two-thirds vote needed to suspend the regular order of business to bring a bill to the floor. Thank, Thank you. you, Senator.